Hi, Fashion Dolls. It is Motivation Monday, November 18th, and welcome to an all-new episode of Style by Stevie. Our very special guest today is one of the hottest actors, directors, and writers. And you know him from films such as Recognize, I Want Her, and his latest, Offline. Without further ado, Fashion Dolls, let's welcome to the dollhouse, Terry T. Miles. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? I, I'm doing wonderful. It is such a pleasure to be in your presence. I feel like I should bow down or something. Your work. I'm such <laughs> nah, a fan. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I definitely appreciate that. How you doing though? I am doing wonderful. It's a blessing to be here with you. Like I'm, I'm just awestruck because your work is everywhere. You are one of the hottest writers, directors, actors in the biz. Everyone is talking about your work, whether it's Swap Out, whether it's Recognize. <laughs> How I got introduced to you was through Recognize One, the first one. And then yeah. I went back and I watched the sequel. It ain't real if you recognize. Right. And then I went back and I watched Father May I, and yeah. then I seen you in BFF. So I mean, the list goes on and on, which we'll get into. Yeah. But before we get <laughs> your work how has 2024 been for you so far because it seems like the year went by flew by so fast it did it actually did um um <clears throat> i mean 2024 has been a a really big learning experience for me uh not just in the film but uh also the ways of life period uh dealing with you know dealing with people um still dealing with the industry um i i'm just i I really just took a step back and, and looked in. I had been inside the circle for so long. Um, I stepped out of the circle just to look in, just to see what everybody else was seeing because the genre of people has pretty much changed. And um, I, I needed to step out so I can learn the ways of uh, the generation up to today. And, and now I see how different it is. Um, it's a whole different ball game of morals and principles and respect um and i'm realizing that right now so you know i'm i'm, I'm still learning like i say it's, it's been up and down uh for me this year but it's never lost it's only learning experiences i'm so glad you touched on that and the reason why i kind of pointed my finger is because i agree with you the industry yeah. has definitely shifted and i have this conversation a lot with a lot of independent filmmakers right. and producers here on my platform and I want to salute you also for giving Black actors an opportunity. Yeah. Be as a Black creator yourself, giving Black actors, filmmakers an opportunity. Because in this business, it's very few and in between of Black filmmakers who get out here on their own independently and do it themselves. Correct. And I know this is a lot of work. Yeah, correct. But correct. As, I, as I mentioned, introducing you in the beginning of our interview, your work is talked about everywhere. It's like fire is everywhere people yeah. are talking about it. and the industry has definitely changed <laughs> where's more so you see a lot of producers under a major motion picture company like warner brothers to be exact for example right. or let's say marvel or so right. many others you took the mold you you and maya speller y'all right. two are like like Ashford and Simpson of <laughs> filmmaking, because y'all two are a dynamic duo. When I tell you, your work is everywhere. People are talking about it, Terry. Yeah. I'm watching. Everyone is watching, and we love and we see what you're doing. And it was one interview that you did when you were talking about the first recognized film. Correct. The, your your films have a message. In yeah, it. it's an underlying message in every project that you put yeah. out. For the first recognized film. You said that for young brothers out here, I want young brothers to see that not everything is all that glitters and gold, that right. glitters is gold out here in the streets. Right. There can be your average looking Joe. There's right. somebody out here, be better than me. Don't do exactly what I'm doing, but be better than me. And that was one thing you said in your interview because we are losing our black men to right. the streets. And this is coming from me, a black woman. Right. And I've seen it. 
I've right. seen it all out here and I've been on the front lines being vocal right. for change and things, but that message was very, very powerful for recognize. And I'm a little mad at you. I'm a little mad okay. at you for what you did in two. And then I'm a little mad at you for what you did in Father May I. Okay. I, I was a little mad. You always played the most villainous characters, but <sighs> we'll talk about yeah. that later in this interview. But I really wanted to give you your flowers because you. what you're doing is what we need more of. Thank you. And I think young black men growing up need to see someone like yourself, Terry. Thank you. Because they think the first thing to do is go out here in the streets and the education system is already failing them and so quick to give up on them. They need role models like yourself. And I think that more and more of your projects coming out, whether it may be Uncle Willie, whether it may be Dee Dee <laughs> and recognize you better than Dee Dee, yeah. but your projects have a message. Yeah. And I think more and more young black men need to take hold to this message. So my first question for you is before we get to all of your projects and everything, yeah. who is Terry T. Miles? Where did he grow up and how many siblings? Uh, um, I, I pretty much, I grew up in uh, Washington, D.C., Southeast Washington, D.C. Um, one sister, um, Elisa, she's, uh, she works for the United States Secret Service. But uh, I'm, I'm basically a, a product of Washington, D.C., a full Washingtonian. No, I'm not the DMV. I'm a Washingtonian. Uh, I come out of Washington, D.C., but uh, and shout out to my city. I love my city. My city supports me. My city uh, has my back to the fullest. Um, and also, man, a big shout out to Atlanta because it's really not where you're from. It's where you're at. And I mean, I can't leave Atlanta out because Atlanta's been very good to me. Uh, very good. And I'm just I'm just a blessed individual and I'm I'm real, real happy about everything about myself. Yes. yes. And what age did you discover the passion for filmmaking? Um I I, I actually started well my, my first film um that I was really trying to do when I really wanted to pursue this. And uh shout out to uh my DC homie Mike Brooks, comedian Mike Brooks. And also another guy by the name of Hannibal. Uh, our first film we was doing in uh, 2003. Uh, it was a comedy comedy called Plan B. We was doing in D.C. And um, we had a casting in, at the TGI Fridays. And the, the line wrapped around the building uh, for it. But, and that's when I just up and I moved to Atlanta. And um, everybody else pretty knows my story with, you know, Master P actually the one who really showed me the game, the film game, by me just being with him every day, you know, and, and just seeing what he was doing and what he was actually creating. And I've seen how he was doing it. You know, he took me to a lot of the meetings where he was going to with, from Urban Works um, when um, Blockbuster was out. And I, I pretty much just uh, learned the game from him. And me being the hustler that I am, I just came back to Atlanta, you know, from going back and forth to L.A., you know, like once and twice a week being with him. I just came back and I applied it to myself and um, it actually worked. And look at you now. Yeah. And you've met comedians. You've worked with Cat Williams yeah. in a film called yeah. Internet Dating. What was it Correct. like working with Cat Williams? And the interview that everyone was talking about that kicked off 2024. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, um, Cat let me tell you Cat is a genius. Uh, yes. Don't 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 listen to the media about saying he's crazy and he's insane. Cat oh. Cat is actually a, a a great. He's a great person. Uh, he's a hell of a father to adopted kids that he adopted, yeah. and um, they live with him. Um, and he's a genius. Um, working with him, I mean, he's someone else that I I learned a lot. Um, with doing that film, um, and it was definitely a star cast. Uh with everybody from the great Ronaldo Ray, uh, Big Liz from Saturday, it was the first female to be with Saturday Night Live, Clip, my homie Clifton Powell, you know, and that was something Master P just put together off the top of his head. And, you know, we, we really had fun doing it out there in L.A. I mean, it didn't really get it pl its play like movies are now because you got to think when we was doing it, it wasn't no social medias. It, it wasn't no uh, Tubi's and Amazon Primes and all that. It was only blockbuster. That's it. Blockbuster, that's it. It wasn't nothing else. So, you know, I tell a lot of people, I, I'm just not coming around in this game because you see 
these streaming flat platforms. I've been in this game for a long time. I'm working on almost 22 years now. So, you know, it's, it's, I see what people doing and I salute everybody. I love to see independent filmmakers out here get money and also following their dreams and getting their films done. And I just really realized, you know, I, I used to get mad or used to bother me to see, you know, if I do something and, and someone else out here does it or someone else emulates it. But I've, I've came to the conclusion that, man, when God gives you a gift, um, sometimes it's not really about, you know, being successful to brag about who you are or the money that you make. Sometimes he gives you a gift to be a wake up call for others who have the gift and they don't know they really have it until they meet you or they come around you or they see you. So now I love when I see people emulating anything that I do, because I mean, it makes me a set, a, a, a trendsetter. And, um, and I want everybody to be blessed to be in a position to be able to take care of their, their families and everything. Uh, I never want to be a gatekeeper to nobody in this industry. There's a lot of people out here I helped. Uh, and I love doing it. Because right now, you know, to be honest with you, I like doing films, but I'm really getting tired. But the only thing that really gets me going is helping these other independent filmmakers to make their project be very successful. And I live, you know, my happiness through their eyes when they see they did something, they accomplished that. They just thought was just a thought in their head. And, you know, God used me to come in their life and, and help them. So, you know, a shout out to everybody that's out here really following their dreams who not just talking about it. And they actually doing it because it's not easy. It's, it's, it's never easy. It's hard. But check this out, man. If it was easy for you, it ain't really worth working for. I'm just telling you. You want the hard work because that ain't going to do nothing but make you grow stronger and get you ready for this industry because it will tear you down if you're not really built for it. Absolutely. And it's either go hard or go home coming into exactly. this business. Exactly. And I started right after high school posting Style by Stevie doing this platform. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> but thank God I had the likes of people backing me yeah. 100%. Yeah giving me encouragement along the way and guiding me. So it literally takes a village. And you said, stop filmmaking. I feel like I don't want to keep going. Keep yeah. going. No, because I'm going to keep going. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm definitely keep going. Uh, like I say, I, I just get tired sometimes because, like I say, um, when everybody was doing the music and it was uh, uh, billions of rappers, you know, I was over on this end. Because you got to think, like I say, being with P, we stopped the music and started doing the films while everybody was doing the music. So now it's a billion filmmakers. And, you know, like I say, I, I only get tired because I try to help everybody. But sometimes you got to understand when you can't be accessible for certain people, they don't really understand your shoes. No, no one understands your shoes until you they're actually walking in your shoes. So they may get a little upset with me because I'm not being accessible to them to a degree but i try to help everybody and sometimes that'll weigh you down it'll weigh you down because you want to be there for everybody you know but the mouth say a lot of things the ass really really don't want to do exactly and you're like me we both have that in common where we both like to help everybody girl you are an angel we love you stevie thank you <laughs> <Nolan>. thank <laughs> you and this dress, I'm an angel today. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. That brings me to my next question for you. You sure. said with helping people. Sure. And we talk a lot because someone called you a legend. And I believe in my heart that you, everybody in there is a legend in their own right. And you are a legend because you've set the blueprint. You've helped out so many up and coming actors, producers, yeah. Yeah. black filmmakers. You've yeah. networked. You've laid the pathway. So my next question for you is, what's the best reality that you wish for and how does it compare to your present future? What are you manifesting for the future? Uh, oh, you know what? To be, to be honest with you, what I manifest is just, man, peace. 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 That's it. Um, it's, 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 like I say, God has blessed me so much. I mean, Stephen, when I say bless me so much, to where I'm, I'm overwhelmed to everything that happens to me every day. And 
I just I just ask for the peace. I, that's it. I just want the peace, the happiness. Um, it ain't about no money. It ain't about none of that because that's not peace. That money is not what makes you rich. I mean, what makes you rich is peace, having peace. That's what that's what rich is really about. It's not money. And people don't know that because, like I say, I, I have a lot of millionaire friends, a lot. And I know that they're not happy. They're not happy at all. They're miserable. They don't have nobody around them to show them no real love. So one thing I've understood, rich is, is peace. And that's all I ask for is just to have the peace. That's it. It's nothing else I really trip about. You know what I'm saying? Because, of course, I'm going to keep doing the films because that's what I know. And I'm so far in it. That's how I pay my bills but at the end of the day all i want is the peace that's all i manifest every day is the peace and just make sure everybody around me that really believe in me that's around me is happy and they have the peace too that's it that's it now how do you celebrate your success because you come out on top. You've made a name for yourself. How do you celebrate all your success and give yourself your flowers? Because I believe that when you work hard, you should reward yourself every now and yeah. again as well. Um, um me, I'm, I'm just like I'm, I'm real, I'm, I'm real simple. Um, like I said, I, I celebrate when I see anything that's accomplished with independent filmmakers or independent actors that I work with, especially the independent actors who work with me and it's their first film. Like the movie Offline was just released the other day and just just getting f- feedback from, you know, Bobby Valentino, um, Elena Victoria, Treasure. Um, a, a lot of those people, uh, it it helps me to celebrate. And I feel good because I hear the the, the, the happiness in them. And, and like I just had a talk with one of the actresses, Victoria, the other day. I just... She, you know, she was giving me my flowers then. I, and I understand and I respect that when she was saying I do so much, but it ain't enough that I want to see for them. I, I, I want more for them. I, I, I'm, I won't really be happy to I see. Of course, yeah, we, we did a film and we made it and it's out, but I won't never really be happy to I see the other jobs that they're doing behind the camera. They don't have to do no more. That they can just really focus on just this because I see they love it and. I want them to be able to just focus on this to where they're making a living for them, for themselves and their families doing this. And the whole job is to man reach one, teach one, so they can go and do the next to someone else. And that's what I try to do. You know what I'm saying? I just try to make the doors open for people who really wants this. And hey, if, if God bless them to blow to another level, hopefully they'll go back and get somebody else. I see. Look at that in the comments right there. Traumatized beauty. And the fact you give us these opportunities, you are the greatest and the best is yet to come. We appreciate you. And I I love what she just said, which is basically what, and I'm going to break it down. What you put out in the universe is going to come back full circle. What that means if you're helping the next person and the next person and the next person, it's going to come back to you full circle. And remember, I told you earlier when I asked you that question about what do we need that to back us that support system but big shout outs to my brother uh K Tooks make sure you guys please go and check him out the K Tooks spot um and he sat with a few names in the industry as well too so definitely go check out his platform um he's my brother and Terry when I tell you there are days when I'm down when I'm just yeah. going crazy he will call and pick up the phone and be like hey sis what's going on you need How those you people feel? you need those Absolutely. kind of people in your life trust me I, I i hey and i respect that i respect that brother for that i mean you need those kind of people in your life uh because times do get hard it, it, it gets hard and when when you are that shoulder for a lot of people at the end of the day you need a shoulder that's why suicide is so high when it comes to comedians because you got to understand they're so used to making everybody laugh around them who is there to make them laugh because nine times out of ten, comedians go through a lot. People just don't understand that and know. Because, you know, they have that mask to put on in front of people when they come around as the life of the party. Or you always make me happy. Or you make me laugh. But they don't have nobody to make them laugh when they're going through so much. So that's why the suicide rate is so high for them. That's why I love that movie, The Joker. Because it's so real. It's so real. And it's, it's, it's what's going on with a lot of us out here. So we, we definitely need those people 
in our lives that sometimes man can just pick up the phone and call and check on you, not for what you could do for them or what you're doing to see how they can get in, but just pick up the phone and make sure your mental health is correct. Okay. Cause we have a heart. Everybody's everybody got a heart right now. Everybody. So that's why we all have to come together, pull together, and be there for one another. Because man, we're living in some real effed up times right now. And we all need somebody. Somebody, you know. And, and I mean, just to reflect back on what you said a while ago, I gotta give another shout out because we have another big film that's coming out. It should be coming out this week or next week, Beauty and the Struggle. And that that film is special to me because that was the idea my nephew came up with. And um um he came he moved, moved to Atlanta. Uh, he hasn't moved here. He was doing very well with uh, doing music videos for a lot of the well-known, you know, R&B singers and rappers. Um, and he came to me and said, oh, I want to do a film. I want to do a movie. And just like recognize, he was like, man, uh, I told him, I was like, when I did recognize, I didn't have a script. I just told everybody what to say. And he was like, I want to do it like that. I was like, oh, oh, shh, my bad. I, I told him, I said, I don't know if you're ready for that yet nephew because that's that's not as easy as what you think and he was like oh i'm ready and he came to me the next day with the whole concept uh he came to me um with everything he wanted to do with it and so i sat back and i just wanted to see how he was going to start moving because i'll help you but i'm not going to do all the work because i want to see if you do it because if i do all the work you ain't gonna learn nothing but i'm gonna let you man lead and try to see you leading yourself off the cliff and one thing I can say about him, he did it. We His first film, actual first feature film he's ever did, and he ended up doing his first movie with doing part one and part two all together. And when I tell you this movie is a masterpiece, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm a really a little too mad about him because it looked better than anyone I've ever done. And this was his actually first film he directed. Uh, he came up with the concept. Of course, we sat down and we mapped everything out. And I walked him through everything, but he did it. I mean, he did it all himself. I'm very proud of him. And uh, we gonna we got a lot more we agree to do for uh, 2025. All right. Let me read some of you guys' comments. Y'all are coming in so fast. I see y'all. Oh my God. Let me see. Uh, um, Noli says he would be great to have to be involved in that 501c3 project we are working on. Facts. Damn, Terry, you're saying some real ish facts. Be the support you want to see from others. I won't be more passionate about your career than you are. It, me, I like to create vision boards. I like to, what Terry just said was key because when you're creating something, if you're going into filmmaking, hosting a platform, if you're a fashion girl like me and you want to design clothes and do all of these things, it starts off with a plan. Yeah. So. I create vision boards and on my vision board, I created it back in 2023. I said, everything I wanted to do in 2024, it has now come to fruition. And as I'm looking across the room over there, one of the two, well, two of the words that I put on that board, board is power and focus. So you have to remain focused on whatever it is that you're going for. And in order to get that power, you, um, our Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, she said this, she said, when you walk into that room, you don't let these people tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. You let them know. So that's for anybody going for any job position or filmmaking, looking to start a business, to start a company. You tell them, I am here to create. You let them know. So I want y'all to remember that. It, it takes a plan. It starts from plan yep. A to plan B. It's, and, you know, it might not be a... a, a how can I say it? It might not be a success overnight. It takes time, but trust me. Everything, you can think it, every, everything takes time. You got to understand everything that's in front of you right now. If you take a look at your room right now was a thought. It was a thought in someone's head. And you got to understand that's what even man filmmaking to me is so magnificent is because it becomes a thought in your head that you put on paper and you bring to this dimension for everybody to love or respect or give you props for that was something that's in your head so you got to take what 
whatever you're doing to a level to where you're very serious about it if you want people to really respect it or even give you the respect. And that's what I love about filmmaking because it's a thought in my head that sometimes I just think like, man, man, that ish is crazy, man. But then I think about like, hey, man, I might need to do that as a movie. Yeah. And you do it and what you thought was crazy, someone else will come to you and tell you, I love that. So you'd be like, wow. So that's why you know it has to be a God out here. It has to be. It has to be. None of this can just be just like out of coincidence, all this right here. It has to be some kind of high power being. So that's why I just constantly pray and I talk. Because if he do really exist, he got to hear me. And it, it got to be real because everything I ask for, it comes. It comes. And look at that. Traumatized Beauty says, thanks for believing in me, Team T. Miles. Uh, she says, working with was one of the best experiences I've had. You were so inspiring. I love your passion and drive. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with you. And Bobby Valentino is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's my little bro right, right there. That's my, hey, that's my dude. That's my guy right there. That's, that's my guy. Right, let me tell y'all something about Bobby, man. And this is another thing that made me offline. It wasn't, it wasn't even for Bobby to do. Uh, God put it in a position for Bobby to come about. And I, I, I didn't think he was going to be able to pull that off because and it, it was so hard for him. Bobby actually had, had a, a, a panic attack on set. And he pulled, he pulled me in the room and he, I was like, what's wrong? And he was like, T, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, you know, this this ain't me. This this role ain't me. Um, I don't see how a man can actually do a woman like this. He said, you know me. I got respect for women. I love the women. I'm a ladies' man. And I'm like, yeah, I understand that, Bobby. I said, but you are acting now. Because I've, I've been on Bobby taking acting classes for years. And when I sat back and I watched this dude bring this character to life, it couldn't, it couldn't have been no better person. And to be honest with you, I wrote the role for me to do. And man you know when, when god tells you to step to the side and um give it for someone else i mean that's what i did and it was a battle it was a going back and forth and i knew the devil was man the enemy was trying to play in the part of like nah don't let him do it let this person do it or you do it and it was just so much so i had to really sit back and think and i had to listen to the team tell me like yeah t no t yeah t no t and then you know we just came to a conclusion that yeah and he came in we had so many problems with the film of reshooting, retaking, redoing, reshooting. I just didn't want to quit because everybody know me. I'm also the kind of person that if something's not going to work, I'm not going to force it. So I'd be like, man, F it. Man, I'll do it again. Or F it. I ain't worried about it. But seeing the passion of everybody and I seen what the problems that was going on, I was determined to get the movie done um, and, and get it out because I felt like it was really, really needed. And Bobby did a hell of a job. The whole team did a hell of a job. Everybody that played a part in it, I mean, it was truly a blessing, you know what I'm saying, for me. And, I, and I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm glad it's out. And we're going to start part two in the early of the year. All right. There are answers to that question. Someone said part two in the comments. Hey, sister, a big shout out to my sister, Simone Jones. Oh, shout out. Shout out, you, shout out to Simone. Go, Shout out to Simone, oh, man. Uh, Simone is the kind of person, man. And she's one of the ones who, who, her and and Valerie was with me from the beginning. I mean, the first mm -hmm. stage. Uh, I got a lot of I got a lot of love for Simone because uh, she has the drive, she has the ambition, and she 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 can boss up. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I look at Simone like a daughter of mine. Simone know how I am. She. She know, I, hey, when it's time to do this, I'm going to do this. When it's time to say, I'm going to say that. I, I got a lot of love for that girl because, man, that girl have a lot in her that I don't even know she has for herself. But I'm here to tell her, man, I, I see the real big, big potential in her. But we all out here dealing with things. We all are. Keep going, baby. And, uh, you know, keep your head up. And I know you're back in VA. Just take VA by storm. Balls up in VA. Let them know where you're coming from who you was dealing with. And I want to give her her flowers too, because she's also a part of my girl talk, talk show panel. Yeah. It's me and a panel of five other women. And 
when I first met Simone, I didn't know who she was. I just saw when I was scrolling on Instagram, I just randomly, I said, who can I get to put this panel together? And I randomly selected black women from all walks of life. And I was scrolling down and I seen a picture of her. I said, she would be her perfect energy, for it. And I just energy is strong. Her energy yes. is strong. Um, she's, a, she's a strong woman. Um, she's, she's a very dominant woman. If, if, if you weak, you, you can't, man, deal with Simone because, I mean, she won't let it be known. And I mean, like I say, her, her presence demands attention when she steps in the room. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, you just got to be ready for it. But that's what you need on your team. You need those kind of players on your squad if you're trying to win. And, and Terry, when I met her, when I locked eyes with her, we met each other back in, I want to say, 2020. I, I I said, well, my gosh, she's so gorgeous. <laughs> and we're both sitting up here, glammed up on the television screen and everything. And we clicked. And after the conversation that we first had, because we were just talking about issues that women go through, yeah. I think we talked about texturism, which is a thing for hair and so many other things. And after that, she joined the next panel. And she's literally like my little sister. Yeah. I'm a big sister. I'm very protective over her. And She's very protective over me, vice versa. Yeah. When I tell you, she will reach out and check to see if myself or any of those other women, because we have a group, it's a group of us, are okay. Like, you go, oh, girl. She's, de yeah. like, and she's definitely one of those ones. That's what I mean by her her, de her, her demand. I mean, you know, her, her being so demanding is, 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 is the love. She's going to be there for you. She's going to make sure you need whatever you, you know what I'm saying, you need. She's going to be demanding with the way She's gonna be able to reach you if you're down. Those are the people that you need. She's gonna she's gonna shower you with the love. She's gonna make sure that you're good. You know what I'm saying? With everything. And some people will take it, you know what I'm saying, on another whole level. But that's just her energy of love. That's how she moved. That's how she just comes with it. So you got the right person on your squad when it comes to that. And, and um, it's a blessing to know her. She is a blessing. And she says, yeah. keep going, Terry. Can't wait to watch the film. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out tonight, Simone. It's on Tubi. Check it out. But nah, it's, it's, now, it's good. Now, I told Terry that I was going to get on his ass for them characters he didn't play. <laughs> now, where do I begin? Because that was going to be my next question for you. How is it easy for you to get into character? Let's go down the list here because you played Jacob and Tat. Yeah which is one of my favorites personally. It was sort of yeah. like a cat and mouse game. Yeah. You showed up, baby, when you showed up to that scene at the, din the dinner scene where you showed up with her sister, yeah. she was, and y'all two were messing around. I said, oh, man. And yeah. then yeah. you was like, be cool. You're going to blow up your own spot. Yeah. Baby, that was a plot twist. Yeah. And then y'all still messing around. <laughs> and yeah. then you dropped flowers at the doorstep. Yeah. You, after you had your affair, y'all two, yeah. you dropped flowers at the doorstep for her. Then yeah. the next character, Father Mayot, yeah. which is a great film as well, yeah. too. It talks about abuse, child yeah. abuse, and so many things that yeah. go on within the Black community. Yeah. And, you were the evil boyfriend yeah. in that movie. When I tell you, I was so mad. I'm like, yeah. when you hit that girl, I said, oh, no, my God. Please. You know what's crazy? What's so crazy about that? Everywhere I go, especially when it comes to a lot of women, um, they they yell uh, um, the, the the saying what I always what I say to the kids: uh, take your ass to bed and don't wake up. Take your ass to sleep and don't wake up. Every I don't care, and it throws me off sometimes because sometimes I be forgetting. And a lot of times, you know, I was coming out of the club in uh, D.C. and uh. A whole bunch of women just came out and said, we know who you are. Oh, we hate you. I was like, what you mean? And one of the girls that she had out, take your ass to sleep and don't wake up. And I couldn't do nothing but laugh because I knew what he was talking about. But, uh, you know, and I want to, man, big shots, big shout out to Maya Speller. Uh, because uh, those was like, uh, those films were like some of, from some of her books. And um, she's doing her, uh, she's doing her thing now. And a uh, big shout out to her. And uh, y'all keep supporting her and what she got going on, you know what I'm saying? Because she's a she's a female now who who learned the game and now is applying the game to herself. And you know that's what I like for anybody, you know, for you to spread your wings and fly. You know what I'm saying? Fly if you can do it, do it. You know what I'm saying? So man, 
big shouts out to her. Keep supporting her for her films, uh, what she has going on. And, uh, you know, it's just another one that was reached. And uh, just hope she go back and get somebody else and teach them the game, too. If it's not tip or tat, then it's recognize one, recognize two. Yeah. Recognize yeah. two was a little bit to the extreme because yeah. Didi came back for his revenge. The, yeah. the microwave thing. If you know, you know. I'm not going to get yeah. into the logistics of it. You guys have to go and check it out for yourself. Yeah. I'm like, this poor... That was, and, I can't give it away, and, that, and And that was a real situation that took place in D.C. Uh, uh, that some guys had did. You know, they didn't actually turn it on, but it was a threat to make the person give the money up. And uh, mostly when it comes to any films like that, especially street films or anything that it's, 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 it's real. It's something I even seen, something I have done in my past or something that I know for a fact that uh, actually happened and took place. But if you like recognize one and two, oh, wait till you see uh, the new film we cast for this Saturday uh, called Trust No One. Uh, me and S. Dot Carter Productions, uh, Queenie, um, She's a, uh, another uh, female filmmaker who's fantastic. Um, I, I give a lot of knowledge to. She take it and she run with it. She apply it. She runs with it and she make it work. Uh, she has three nice uh, hit films that's on Tubi right now. One is Circles. The other one's called Snatch. And uh, another one, um, uh, the, uh, the Box that she has on there. She's out of Chicago. So she'll be here this weekend. We casting for that here. And this movie is going to be crazy. So if you like recognize one and two, trust no one. It's ridiculous. It's going to be All amazing. Right. Fashion dolls, y'all heard it. You see, now we're never leaving this place. Uh -huh. If you know, you know. If you've seen Father May I, the scene where you grab that hammer. I'm like, this, yeah. this is the stepfather from hell. Yeah. <laughs> My God, yeah. what was running through your mind when you were filming that scene with the children? And you know what? Um, shout out to the kids who uh who played that scene. I just I got them in so much of the characters because what I actually did, I wanted them to really, really be afraid. So when um they was going through their lines, uh they had lines before I stepped in the room. And what I did was I, I told the camera guy, I said, uh keep the cameras rolling because they think I'm coming in on this line, but I'm coming in early because I want them to jump and I want you to see the fear in all their faces. So when they start going over their lines, each time we did it, I would come in on an off cue and it threw them off because I would slam the door open and they would just jump and look. And I just, just delivered the lines with them and, um, and just really looked at them. And they was like, man, I was scared. You know what I'm saying? But they they did so good. That's what the whole scene was for, for me to put the fear in them. But it was it was kind of it was kind of hard to do. But I also thought about some past relationships I was dealing with who had badass kids that I always wanted to yell at their ass about, and I just really used that for them. Oh, oh my goodness! If, if I was upset, I'm like, how can you treat those yeah. babies like that? I was like, come on now, Terry, you can't do that. Yeah. But you took the TV from them. So yeah. <laughs> you know how kids are about their TVs. Yeah, I want and them to live like hell. And and the hammers, like I say, that was that was from um from one of my Spella books. And the hammer was actually for because I was supposed to nail the window shut so they wouldn't be able to get no air in the house because I wanted them to feel like hell in their room. No TV, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? No nothing. But it, it it was it was hard, but it wasn't. Like I say, when it comes to me playing any character, I I really sit down and I really get into that character, and I I really emulate it. You know, what I'm saying to the beginning to the end. You always play these villain. Um, I interviewed Amon Josen yeah. from Snowfall, Jerome Saint on Snowfall, mm -hmm. and you remind me much of him because. Y'all both have something in common. Y'all always go for these villainess type yeah. characters. But on a lighter note, Uncle Willie, yeah. we get some get some yeah. humor. So yeah. tell us how did this character come to be? Because this is working again with Master P, No Limit. Yeah. So Uncle Willie, tell us about this. Uh, when I 
I actually, where Uncle Willie came from a stage play, uh, P wanted me to write when the Hurricane Katrina had took place, really uh, first time it took place, and how everybody had to leave New Orleans to come live with Uncle Uncle uh, Willie. And um, I wrote the play, and I actually wrote it for my uh, man, the great late A.J. Johnson, Ezel from Fridays. I wrote him because Ezel's the one who hooked me up with P. And um, I missed that dude. And um, he, he, I actually wrote it for him to do the character and when i wrote it and p and, and p read it p was like you wrote this in in two days i said yeah so um he was like look he was like man um i i want you to play uncle william i was like what at the time i'm like come on man i'm a damn street nigga i'm not playing no damn old dude i never acted in my life and he was like no i want you to play uncle willie and since you since you came up with him you make them you create them you know whatever you need as far as looks or whatever do it send me a picture and we're gonna run with it so i actually went and made up the whole thing got the wig got everything and i sent him the picture he was like i love it man i'm about to see you a plane so we can uh, come out here in la i flew to la and uh we actually did a stage play with it and went on the road with it and, and all the cities and the chicken circuit cities were selling out and i was like wow and they was loving it so much to where they was Sometimes they even was forgetting P and Rome was in the play because they were so much into the character. And like I say, man, God was with me. He he helped me. And um, like, I couldn't believe me memorizing all those lines and at a stage play. That's the hardest. If you can do a stage play, you could do anything because there's no editing. There's no cut. There's no nothing. So if you mess up, you got to mess up on a level to where you, your partner understands that they can keep going and you don't mess them up. So, I mean, you know, it was it was just a blessing. Like I said, I love this. You know, shout out to Master P for showing me and, and showing me that it was another door in my life for me to open and go in that I would be able to take control of and make it successful to work for me and then working for other people. And it happened, and I'm going to go back to what you said about stage plays because it's in real time. Like, we've seen Broadway theater. Yeah. We know exactly what it's like where – We've seen the mishaps, and the key thing is to not let the audience know that you messed up. If you mess up in real time, or if something happens, the audience will gravitate towards Quick. that. And the key thing is to keep going Quick. live. Versus Quick. if you're on set, even though it's a, you're you're both on set in films, this is live in real time. Like how we're live right now in this interview. Once yeah. I'm done, is going to be posted and saved. People can go back go and watch. It. Back so, and watch it. Yep. You got to, I mean, especially me coming in, being the lead character of the whole stage play, the star of it, I had to be quick on my toes when others messed up. So, and because they looked at me as to be that person, the man, we need you to save us. Because, I mean, like I say, that helps too, man, me coming up. Before I got into the film and all that, I was doing the stand-up comedy. I was doing all that. So it helped me to be a little bit more witty on stage and to be quick on my toes that when somebody messed up, I could jump right in and come and cover it up till they got back on track. So, you know, and then having good actors around you from like Romeo and everybody else who was seasoned vets, you know, that helped me a whole lot too. So, I mean, shout out to everybody that uh, took place with that. And my next question for you is, what are some techniques that you use to stay in character? Because I know for Uncle Willie it's comedy and I know for the cast it's hard. I yeah. was why I remember Martin, it was Tashina yeah. Arnold. She said, doing an episode with Martin is hard because he will try to get you to break character. It's like, okay, yeah. first person out when you do on comedy is like, tag, you're it. Yeah. But for you, what techniques do you use to stay in character? I mean, it's crazy. Like anybody who's ever been on one of my sets, which everybody know, is I, I take control, but I play too much. And I'm about my business, but I like, for it to be not just business, but fun. And I, I like for everybody to be in happy mode. I like for everybody to be relaxed because a lot of people is crazy. And I mean, you know, how people will come on set who's the first time dealing with me and they be nervous. And I'm like, man, who the hell am I? I ain't nobody for you to be nervous, shit. So when they come on, I try to break the ice, make everybody laugh, we play, we joke. Um, I play tricks on people. Um, you know, I do a lot. I, I do a lot just to make the set relaxed. And that's what also helps me 
Because to be honest with you, my ass be nervous too. But I mean, you'll never know it. But you know, but I just like to play because I like to see everybody having fun, laughing, and talking. And as we if we could do that, we'll get the job done faster. And we also eating up the time to get it done. And people don't want to leave because they're having so much fun. Man, let's keep going. And we keep going. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what do you do on your days off after a long week? Because I know being a filmmaker, being a creator, being a writer, and then actor, what do you do on your days off when you have downtime? Um, to be honest, uh, I'm I'm kind of, right now I'm kind of loner. Uh every, every day that I'm I'm mostly by myself. Um I, I, I stay by myself a lot. Um I just be just enjoying it. Just just being by myself now. Um not being around nobody. Um I, I notice now that I do that, my vibration be a lot higher, my energy be a lot stronger. Um and and I'm cool with that because it's helping me to learn more and more about the world and people every day. And I mean, it has to happen like that because when God really take you on another level, he got to sit you somewhere by yourself uh, so you can hear him speak. And a lot of times the, the the way I was living and the things I was doing and trying to get this done and get this done and be over here and be over there, we, we don't hear him speak. So when things don't take place in our lives, we get to wondering why it's not taking place. And it's because we can't he's not we we're not allowing him we're not allowing him to speak to us and we hear it so sometimes you got to sit yourself down and that's how he's been put me to the side and right now it's crazy because the blessings are coming in so heavy now to where even i'm a little afraid or i'm overexcited um but overall i, I mean it's what i ask for and it's, it's being given to me it's almost scary because i'm being honest with you it's like having a conversation with you right now and I ask you, you know, for some water and you go get it just like that at a drop of a dime. And it's almost scary. Like, man, is this the devil? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it, you know, because it's it's like man, you and you pray so much and everybody knows it's God's timing when he give you what he's going to give you. But when he give it to you, like directly the next day, you be like, what the hell going on? Am I magic? You know, that's what you start thinking. So overall, I, I feel like whatever's going on with me right now, I'm doing the right things. And and when I ask, he gives. And it's just my season to receive. So, I mean, you know, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm real happy. I'm, I'm happy. And I just try to keep thinking for myself and other people now. I used to think for other people. So when people would do certain things, I would really get upset and the first thing I want is revenge. But now I don't I don't want that. So I can sit right here and and have a problem or feel some kind of way or somebody could do something to me. Mm -hmm. But I can sit right here and still give them their flowers. Because at the end of the day, they just don't know what they're doing and who they're doing it to. So, you know, that's how I look at life now. Absolutely. And time is of the essence. Time is uncertainty. Yeah. I mean, we've lost so many icons this year. When I saw the passing of Quincy Jones, yeah. that, that threw me for a loop like, wait, 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 wait. Not Quincy. Mm. Not Michael Jackson, mm. Quincy Jones. Not Tamia, Quincy Jones. I mean, like, time is of the essence. We've lost so many icons this year. And I believe that it's important that we give people their flowers yeah. now more than ever. That's not the problem with being alone. It just means yeah. that you're human. Yeah. Not all the time you want to be in a group environment. I know sometimes yeah. for me with everything that's going on in the world, I have to make sure that I'm staying in tune and in touch with everybody. It's important for me. Like you said, when I was talking about K-Toots and my girl Simone, it's important we stay surrounded and uplifted and protected by these people. And we do the same vice versa. We have to look out for each other. And someone made a comment. Let me see. I am her under I am her 84 underscore. I should have stuck with my plans and kept pursuing. Girl, don't stop. Keep going. Keep going, beautiful. Don't yeah. stop. Keep going. At there are days when I want to give up. And I'm a Scorpio. Yeah. Scorpios, we have my mom for Libra. So we yeah, know about Scorpio. The, shout out to the Libras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's a Libra, October yeah. 7th. Uh, mine's is the 31st, Halloween. 
And one thing my mom has taught me is to be defiant. Keep going for it. Don't give up. Uh, Always yeah. keep going. Yeah. And I've seen her out here battling with some of the most. Somebody will say something, make her upset. We know how Libras are. They yeah. sometimes are stuck. Oh, yeah, we are. But yeah, this yeah. one right here. <laughs> we are. This one right here, Carrie. I try to pull her away from an altercational situation. You know how our mothers are. If you grew up in a black household, you know your right. mom gave you that look. Like so with her, I just like, okay, you got it, you got it. And I proceed on. I'm not intervening. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. again, keep going. That's the same thing that my mom has told yeah. me and my um brothers and my sister as well, too. Keep going. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna keep going. Um like I say, it, it don't stop to the casket drop. Um, I mean, overall, I, I just, I just want to be that person for someone to to reach a, a a platform or a plateau so high that they can't believe. It. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my goal. My goal is to to do that and and, and be that stepping stone for someone out here who others didn't believe in. That's what I, that's what I enjoy. I, I enjoy that. And look at God, you are, because we got another filmmaker in here, Sharif Snug, who I've also interviewed, and he's in New okay. York. So okay. shout out to him. You are laying you are laying out the pathway for other black filmmakers, Terry. Yeah. You are a legend. So look at that right there, Sharif. Fresh new face. And I got introduced to him through my girl, Nali. He says, if you love it, it's enough to keep going, That's it. keep doing it. That's um, it. And when we did our interview, he said, I'm Miss Stevie. I think I want to give up. You know, I felt like giving up at one point. What advice would you give to Sharif? Um, I would just, man, like, like I say, like, uh, like he just pretty much said it's up, like, keep, keep going. If, if you love, love this, keep moving. And the, the whole thing, I, the, the whole slogan I use for myself, you know, don't use people, use money. Don't love money love people that's mm -hmm. always been my key to this you know once you got that then it's nothing that's going to make you man sell yourself out to do anything crazy but do what you love to do your passion you know your 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 creativity your god-given uh wisdom and gift that he gave you and just remember the whole key is when all this is over and you have to face your, your maker that's going to be one of the things going to ask you, what did you do to bless somebody else with the gifts and talents I gave you? Make sure you have a long list to give to her. That's one of the things I, I, I truly do every day. Try to make sure that I'm out here blessing somebody. Somebody. That's why when everybody come to me and they ask me, man, I just want to shout. I'm like, hey, you ain't got to say yourself to me. You ain't got to give me no bio. Man, just tell me out your mouth you really want to do this. And let your ass do the rest. Just bring it on the set and get ready to work. That's work. If you're ready to work, I'm going to do my part to make sure you get seen. Because, you know, the gift and the curse with me is, the gift is, if you're in a movie with me, you're going to be seen. <laughs> you're going to be seen because I'm going to make sure I'm seen. But the curse is, are you ready to work hard like me? Because, like I say, I'm doing feature films in five days. And we're doing 18 hours, 19 hours a day to get it done. Man, I got something I'm trying to do. So if you want it, rock with me. If you don't, I respect you telling me. Now, I ain't ready to hold. I respect it because you ain't waste my time and someone else who really want it. This is how it is. So fabulous. 32 says you definitely have done that. And you definitely deserve your flowers. Don't stop. Keep going and keep being a blessing. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. The chat moving so fast. <laughs> From... You reminded me who I was again and opened up doors for me. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I will always support anything that you do. Appreciate keep going that. and keep being a blessing to others because it's definitely coming back to you. Thank and you. she just said what I said earlier, which is that again, that, that ripple effect, what you put yeah. out in the universe is going to come back to you. Thank so you. when you help the next, next person and the next person and the next person, it's going to come back full circle. It's true. Time to put in the work. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That's what it's all about. It's all about work. It's all about work. You know, a lot of people talk about other people's stuff about, you know, oh, their film is garbage or their film is this. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about having product. 
if you got product, man, I, I, I respect anybody who went out there and did it. You know, I don't care what it looked like. You did it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will say certain things and ain't done nothing. So at the end of the day, I don't, I don't respect that. I respect anybody. I don't care what kind of work you're in. I don't care if you shot your whole movie with a cell phone. I don't care. You did it. You you did it. That's what it's all about. So at the end of the day, man, when you leave this earth, you left this earth with doing something that you love to do and you say you was going to do it. That's what's about with me. Like, I don't care about nothing else. I heard Ice Cube say the other day that, uh, you know, a lot of people out here is so, so, so quick and, and to brag about what they got going on and what they doing and who they are. And, and Cube was right about that. Cube like, man, I don't say none of that, man. I let my work speak for me. You got to understand if you really who you are, you ain't got to say it. Other people will because they know your work, work ethics. Like I say, I, I've been doing this too long, too long, and I don't really had the time to be running around and saying everything that I've done or who I've helped because the list is long. Some people, I forgot their names, but at the end of the day, it wasn't about, you know, me saying or knowing their names to know who I helped because if that was the case, then that mean I was looking for something in return. I did it from the heart, so I don't even know who I may have helped. All I know is they had my attention right there, and I did it. That's it. Because, you know, the validation I want, and nobody on this earth give me the validation I want. It's only one that can give it to me. And it ain't no human. So I, I don't even care what people think about me. I don't care how they see me. At the end of the day, it's only one who I care about how they see me. And that's the one that created me. Anybody else, it don't even matter. Pay by risk ask a question. What do you look for in young guys? What I look for in uh, actors? Young actors. Yes, young actors. Um, young actors. I mean, just the ambition, the drive, the motivation. Oh, yeah. if, if this is what you really want to do, let's do it. I mean, if not, I'm going to respect you more if you say you don't. Man, time is the only thing we can't get back out here. We can get it. We can't give time back. So don't waste my time. I'm not going to waste your time. Because the thing about it is, if you come to me and say you want to do this, I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. If I can't do it, I'm going to tell you straight up, I can't do it. Because I don't like wasting nobody's time. I don't like doing that. Because I don't like when people do it to me. So just, I just look for motivation, drive. You don't need no long list. You don't need to come tell me about Tyler Perry and what you did and how you sat on the set with him as an extra for two days. And I don't care about none of that. All I care about is what you're ready to do with me, T-Miles. But that's what it's about. That's all it's about. It's about T-Miles. Man, look, what you really do with me? Because we're going to make it happen together. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. And that brings me to my next question for you. What can mm -hmm. you do today that you were not able to do, uh, that you were not capable to do a year ago? You say, what could I do today? that I wasn't able to do a year ago? Yes. Oh, wow. Um, to, be, to be honest with you, that's a, a good one because, I mean, last, last last year was a good year for me. Uh, last year was pretty good. It, it, it was pretty good. Now, what I, what I probably would do better this year or the year coming up is – take my personal life a little bit more serious. Um, and not necessarily just me, the the circle of people I'm around. Because your circle is very important. Um, you could look at a person's circle and pretty much tell where they would be in the next five years. So right now, that's the only thing I could probably really say that I would do a lot better, which I am going to do a lot better this coming year is just being more closely paying attention of my circle and who is around me. And, you know, because the times we're living in right now, that would have a mean disguise, a mean disguise. And um, you just got to be careful with who's around you. That's the only thing I could say this coming up year that I will make better than the last following year. It's just my circle. My work ethics, I'm, I'm, I'm impeccable with it. I'm good. 
It's just this being focused on my circle because that's what can bring you down. And the people you surround yourself with as that's well. That's also. it. That's it. You just got to protect your heart a little bit more. You can't give your heart to everybody and try to do anything and everything for them. You just got to be real. You got to pay real, real close attention. You got to guide. You, you got to really guard your heart a lot more better out here right now because people are really out here to destroy it for no reason. And they don't even have to. I just, I, that's, and that's one thing I'm really having a hard time understanding with people of the day. How can you want to destroy somebody's heart who would give it to you for nothing? You're not even asking for their heart in return. You giving the yours because that's the kind of person that you are. But you have people out here that really enjoy to crush it for no reason. So at the end of the day, now that's that just make me a lot more harder and make me a lot more a guard dog and, and a gate watcher of my heart before I do give it to anybody. And it's nothing personal. It's just the ways of life of today. When is it time to stop calculating risk and rewards and just do what you know is right? Uh, I mean, that's something your your tuition has to talk to you about. You have to have that discernment to really make that 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 answer. You know, that's why I say you, you just got to, man, you know, you just got to pray that, that God keep your third eye open to, man, be able to see what's coming ahead before it even get to you. So, I mean, that's that's the only thing I can say and do about that. Absolutely. It's crazy out here right now. It's really crazy. Uh, it's really crazy. You you got to be real careful out here with anything you do right now. I mean, there's no more friends. Um, even with the relationship situations, uh, it's, 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 it's crazy with the relationship situations. You just got to be real aware of any and everything that you do out here right now. We all are living for ourselves right now. There's nobody else living for you. Everybody's living for themselves. And I mean, this is how it is. It's just a world of selfishness right now. If you could be one of them, or you could just trend it, man, just be still who you are and just be more careful about who you allow in your presence. Absolutely. And more importantly, be vigilant. I've told people that in some of the past episodes. Yeah. Be vigilant. Be careful who you include in your circle. Not everybody's going to go on this journey with you. And it's they're okay not. to leave some behind. They're, they're not. It's okay. Not. They're, they're not. And, and, that, and that's the biggest problem with us. A lot of times, our elevator don't go up because we try to take everybody on it who don't belong on it. Sometimes you got to step back off the elevator and let the door close with them, them people that's on it, that was weighing it down. And when the next elevator comes, step on it by yourself. And what you're gonna learn is as you're going up each floor, when the door open, one person is gonna step on. The next one, another person gonna step on. The next one, another person gonna step on. Then when you realize when you at the top, everybody that stepped off is the people that was supposed to be with you on that elevator. Cause sometimes you get to take the wrong people with you. And when you get to the top, you can end up like Nipsey, a person that was around you killed you because out of jealousy and envy. So you just got to be real, real careful. You got to be real careful. Sometimes you just got to get on the elevator by yourself. And as the, as the, as, as the elevator is going to each floor, let the door open and bring that one person on that, on that elevator with you as it's going up. Because those are the people really supposed to be with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we let Terry go fashion <laughs> We're going to do something, and I do this here with all of my guests that yeah. come to the dollhouse. We're going to do two games here with Terry, and the first one is called the Rapid Five. And Terry has to tell me five things that he can't live without. It can be his favorite football team. It can be his favorite drink, his favorite music artist, whatever that he likes to do in his downtime. And then we're going to do something called Turn the Tables. And this is where my guests get to ask me questions, as many as they want, and it can be on anything life, relationships, religion, fashion, beauty, whatever they want to know. So I'm going to start with Terry with the rapid five. Okay. So T-Miles, okay. 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 tell me five things that you can't live without. 
Uh, five things I can't live without. My daughter, my daughter, who gets on my nerve. <laughs> my son, my mother, uh, uh, me, and the creator himself. Family and God, yep. all the time. God is number one in anything, and my mom, she told me that. Put God first in everything that you do. Yep, that's true. Everything. All right. And that's true. Those are my five, my heart is five things. It is time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Jacob is coming to get me. Oh my God, yeah. Jesus. Here we go. <laughs> it is time to turn those tables, fashion dolls. So it is time. I'm going to pass it on down to Terry here. And Terry is going to ask me some questions for my new viewers because I'm seeing so many new faces in here. Welcome as you just come in. Okay. And whatever you want to know about me, you'll get to find out through his questions. As many questions as you like, take it away. So I get to ask you the questions. Yes. Okay. Um, with this platform that you have, that's a platform that's helping a lot of people get recognized and promoting it. Where do you see yourself with this platform if this is where you want to be in the next three years? I see myself with, with my own network. Because you've mm -hmm. already got one woman, one black woman who's done it, it's Oprah. But I, we know the, the in and outs, like you said in the beginning of the interview, we know the in and out. It's not actually black on. Right. We know who. Run it. But I would do it myself, and I would put other filmmakers like yourself on. I would put other, uh, Sharif is another one. I would put other black filmmakers, producers, writers, black everything. And I wouldn't be selfish and hog it all for myself, Tyler Perry. But that's what I would do. So that's where I see myself with this platform. And this plat this show would be on. So. Let me ask you, so what? What is um what what do you feel like you're missing right now that's not that you would need to take your, your platform to another whole level? What do I feel like I'm missing? I think I've got everything. You know, I have the knowledge, I have the brain. You come in with everything that you need. When you're hosting a platform, you have to do research. You have to make sure that you come in with the facts. And being as considered as like a journalist or an influence or whatever, you come in with the facts and the truth and you lay it on people. Don't go out here and do what corporate media is doing and, and sane watch and make things seem as though they're not. Give people the truth. And that's one thing that I've signed up for when I started this platform back in 2016, right after I graduated from high school. Like I said, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was cocky. I was arrogant. I wanted to fight everybody. I wanted to curse yeah. everybody out that even had an opinion. But as I've grown into my own, I've learned and found my own way. Sometimes you have to find your own way. So that's what I think I would need. Sometimes you have to find your own way. But I'm thankful for the likes of K-Tubes, for the likes of Simone, and so many others who encourage me and give suggestions. So constructive criticism is definitely needed. And I'm open and willing to receive it. I'm not beyond approach. And that's one thing that people need in this business to make them better. So that's the key thing that I think I need. Because before, when I was, I want to say 19, 18, I thought I knew it all. I didn't want to take criticism from anybody. Right. I thought I had it all together. But now that I'm 31 and I see how the progress has come a long way, I see more and more constructive criticism. Okay. And... Who is someone Miss Stevie would have the dream or would love to interview on this platform? Y'all know the answer to that. And I use her hair products faithfully. It is my girl, Taraji P. Henson. I, I That's my homie. I love that, Taraji. That's my homie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's so down to earth and she's like yourself. She she yeah. doesn't take on a character role where she's and she said this in an interview. She said, I won't do it if it doesn't scare right. me. And this is she was doing Empire. Right. And she took on a role. She's like yourself. She's taking yeah. on all of these roles, whether it may be the villain, whether it may be uh 
the mom, whether it may be the funny girl, she's done so much throughout her career. And we're both crazy. So to see her behind the scenes, we love to have a good time. We love to laugh. So it would be Taraji P. Henson. And you know what's crazy? You know, I was actually there when she did her first movie ever. Really? Ever. Her first movie was a movie in D.C. We was over Southeast. Um, and she, she played the young lady who caught AIDS. And um, the name of the movie is called Streetwide 24-7. And uh, that's how she actually got the guy, Bruce, who was filming it uh, uh, in D.C., a D.C. native, started working for John Singleton. And when they was doing Baby Boy, she had just moved to L.A. And, and uh, uh, Bruce dropped her name to John. Cause John wanted that that ratchetness female ghetto kind of female, and that's when they brought in Taraji, and she nailed it. She sure does, J um J W Productions. She sure does. Seven daughters. She just did Sherry Shepherd's talk show talking about her wine. But yes, um, you now know the secret. I use her hair products, so that's why my hair is always intact. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get to ask as many as you want, Terry. So you you're the host uh, now. Um, I kind of suck at this. Um, let me see. Um, so, uh, where, where you where you where you originally from? I am a South Carolina girl, born and raised down here in South Carolina. My father's originally from New York, but my mom. My grandmother, all born and raised down here in South Carolina. Oh, so you're actually in South Carolina? Yes. What part of South Carolina? It's a little Carolina. town called Bamberg. A little town called Bamberg. And we're near Charleston. We're near Columbia okay. and Orangeburg. Orangeburg is like 25 minutes away from me. So Bamberg doesn't really get a whole lot of so, light. It's a very small place. Are y'all off of 20 or 85? Off of 20, okay. yes. Okay, okay. Bamberg? Bamberg, South Carolina. I've never <laughs> heard of that. It's a very small town. B-A-M-B-E-R-G. And Bamberg Earhart. That's where I went to school, Bamberg Earhart High. So what made you so what made you want to be a um into like the podcast or you know the show or what made you want to do that being out there? Cause I mean, I guess that would a small town like that. I mean, shit, how would you get motivated to can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. How could you get motivated to be into what you into out there? I know. It's it's crazy, right? It's a very small town and where everybody's so close minded. Of course, we know the racism down here. Yeah. But I said I want to be the voice for change. Um, and the one day that sparked that change was a mom told me a story. They actually had a clans meeting down in front of the courthouse. And I said, uh uh-uh. uh, this can't go down like so they literally have police officers out there trying to make sure that the clans never got to the people. We also had the Stono Rebellion down here in South Carolina, the transatlantic slave trade, all of these things. So it's a lot of underlying racism down here. I said, I have to be the catalyst for change. So that's what motivated me to get a platform. People need somebody to be vocal for them, especially the Black voice. And that's where I said, okay, now is my time to emerge and step up to the plate. Because we have radio stations, but they're predominantly right, right. Um, but it's few that are, you know, in brown and black spaces at the colleges, at the universities. But there needs to be someone that is going to take South Carolina to another place that's never been before. And I said, if I can be that catalyst for change, I'll do it. But it's a very small town, and that is a very good question to ask because it is like Bamberg, South Carolina. Never heard of it. It's a very small town. And there is underlying racism down here. So I'm like in the in the deep of it. But with, with creating this platform, it's been my escape. It's been my getaway. Hmm. So, so how do you go? Well, I guess you go by getting your guesses by reaching out on the internet. But if it wasn't for the internet, I guess you, uh, I don't know who you would be interviewing down there. And you said it was Danbury, what you say? Dan- Bamberg. 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 God <laughs> dang. Is that one of them times that they say so small you could throw a rock through it? Yes, because we got Denmark, we got 
Columbia, we got Charleston, we got Myrtle Beach, we got Orangeburg. So, so many different parts of South Carolina. Spartanburg is another one as okay. well. I, I know about Spartanburg, and I've been down to uh, Myrtle Beach a couple of times. So, I probably rode through there, huh? Damn. Probably got one stoplight, huh? One gas station. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What do y'all do for fun? I think I'm about to sue him for a loop, y'all. <laughs> what, 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 I mean, you know, I mean, because I've been in small towns, and I always ask people, like, man, what the hell do you do for fun in a town like like this? We have to go outside of the state. Like, I have a lot of girlfriends that go outside of Bamberg because there's literally nothing down here. We we had a department store that's gone. All of these things that we had down here are gone. So we're literally having to go to Columbia. And as someone said in the comments, JW, um, Myrtle Beach, if we want to shop or see the latest tourist attraction, but there's nothing really down here where I'm at. So Jeez. I said, this platform, we sit on the porch. Crooks, eh, yes, yes, that too. But I don't like getting bit up by mosquitoes and all of that. No, I can't do oh, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now y'all got some mean mosquitoes down there, man. I mean... I, every time I would come through there, I mean, the mosquitoes is like on another level. It's like they got a, a set of grown people teeth in their mouth. Like it's, it's another whole level with the mosquitoes down there. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let y'all have that. I'm going to let y'all have that down there. And, 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 and Bambi, and Bambi, South Bamber. Carolina. Bamber, South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, Bambi, South Carolina. But guess what, though? It's always someone like yourself that really, really dreams big. And would be one of the ones that would actually probably most likely blow up real big out of a small town like that. So you just got to keep going. You, you just got to keep going. You're doing a hell of a job because um, you're reaching out to people now, you know what I'm saying, to come on your, your platform. And social media makes it easier. So you got to take advantage of it and keep going. You just got to keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a, a fantastic job. And, Ms. Diva, I, I, I definitely had the pleasure of being here with you. And I appreciate you and I respect you to the fullest for even asking me or wanting me or saying you was a fan or you were a fan of me, period. And I th thank you. I, I thank you to, uh, to the, from the bottom of my heart. I definitely appreciate you. And anytime you need me, all you got to do is hit me up and I'm there for you. I'm there for you. And I appreciate you so much, Terry. Like this was one of the greatest interviews I've ever done out of my lifetime. I've done so many. And when I reached out to Terry, I've, he's, look at that. <laughs> he's seen some of the ones that I've done because I've sent them yeah. to him. I've yeah, had so many guests yeah. on this platform. And till this day, the, this one right here, I'm thankful for because I see what you're doing. Again, I see your work is out here and people are talking about it. And I'm a fan of Thank it. You. To know these characters, to know the movie, yeah. to know the scene, Everything. I am a fan of. Thank you. Genuine. I definitely, I definitely appreciate you. I, I, I definitely do. Like I say, whenever you need, whenever you need me, just call me. I'm there for you. Same here. So before we close out, Terry, what are some gems that you would like to give to your followers, to your supporters? They are here. Well, like I, like, like I said earlier, um, when I, when I told the other filmmaker, just. Love people, don't love money. Use money, but don't use people. That's 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 the most important gem that I can give anybody. Because if you if you follow that, you'll never have to worry about selling yourself out. Because that's all it is. Uh, they look at us as we sell each other out for a dime. So I'm just telling you, just love your people, man. Just love the people, and also love on them while you have them. Because the way times are right now, people are leaving this earth at a rapid pace. And just don't be one of the ones like, damn, I should have called in yesterday. Because you you never know. And just love what you do out here. Love, love what you do out here. And don't focus on the money. Because if you love what you do, you love what you do, you'll find yourself making the money. But when you start loving the money, first thing you're going to be around here doing is turning down opportunities thinking that it's not worth it because you so focused on this dollar. Man, take it from me. I done did this stuff and I ain't even got a dollar from nobody. And I ain't even tripping about that because at the end of the day, I got the respect. 
And that's the only thing you can, only thing, that's the only thing that you can take with you when you leave this earth is respect. Money, you can't. You can't take it. You ain't never seen a U-Haul following no damn hearse on no way to no grave site to drop everything off. But you can take the respect with you. And as long as you have respect by people, you will never do bad. Because ain't nobody going to let you do bad as long as they respect you. Take it from me. That's the life I live to this day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And today's final thought, Fashion Dogs, the most important thing you can do for yourself is to prioritize rest. Now, Terry, in this interview today, talked about taking time for himself. Sometimes we need to be alone. We need to reflect and we need to take time for ourselves and protect our peace. It is so important in a day and age when, as Terry mentioned, we've lost so many people. Yeah. So make sure that you are in time and putting yourself first. Rest. Protect your peace. Protect your energy. If, and with everything that's going on, I want you guys to tune out for a minute. And if you got to unplug, unplug. It's okay to unplug. It's okay yeah. to talk about it and, yeah. and prioritize. So put yourself first. Um, Find means and ways of self-care. Now, my my means might be a little bit more expensive because you know I have to make sure the hair is done, have to make sure the nails is done, um, everything. <laughs> but make sure that you find ways to yeah. stay sane with everything that's going on in a world of chaos. Yeah, find an outlet for you that works. Writing is one for me. Fashion is an escape. Uh, find what works for you. Reading is another one as well too. So yeah. find an outlet. Yeah. Yeah, or just going to a park, sitting down, like going to a park, sitting down and just, you know, meditating, you know, praying, you know, and, and just, just remember all the time you don't have to pray out loud. Your 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 biggest things that you want to go to God with, just do it in, internal. Because remember, when you pray out loud, the enemy is listening too. And sometimes he'll try to send his his workers to you faster than God will just to try to destroy you before you even get to the blessing God is already preparing you for. So sometimes pray internal because God is already in you. He's going to hear you. And sometimes that's the only way you can outbeat the devil because he can't hear your internal prayers, but he can hear what come out that mouth. So be, be, be real, real careful. Sometimes y'all pray for men or you pray for women. And then when they finally come and you wonder how they destroyed your life, it's because the devil heard what you was asking for, and he sent one of his to you. So, man, this prayer eternal sometimes. That's the best prayer because God hear you and he feel you. He's inside you. So sometimes you ain't got to keep praying outside out loud. If you want to, if you want to, man, do anything, praise his name out loud outside. And that's what's going to get the devil mad. That's all. Um, Karoom's. Yeah, Karooms says, always a pleasure, Terry. And J.L. White Production, walking trails is my escape. Yeah. I'm just for Miss Amore. Absolutely. That's good, too. So. Walk, walking trails, yeah. Nature. Just being with nature sometimes will bring you a lot of peace. That's definitely a good one. Definitely. We did an hour-long interview, and I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation today i hope it was healing i hope it was helpful and impactful to all of you as well the film is called offline and it offline. stars bobby Bellin. Yep. make sure you guys go and check it out on all platforms right now check out some yep. of the previous work that terry has done whether it may be recognized one recognize two swap out bfs i want um, her father man yeah I there's want so her. many her. yeah tick for tack uh behind the veil one and two uh, it's 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 a lot. It, it's a lot. And then I have so many more coming. So many more coming. Uh, just 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 be on the lookout. Twenty twenty five is gonna be a good one. And joining me tomorrow, Fashion Dolls, we have Summer Rona. She will be joining me, and I will see you guys tomorrow, Fashion Dolls. So Terry, before we close out, let everyone know where they can follow you, where they can check you out. You can follow me on all platforms from uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. This Terry T. Miles. Uh, everything should come up. Um, and 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 if you reach out to me, nine times out of ten, it's no other 
assistance and then it's me. So, um, you know, just, just, just come at me in a respectful way. And I mean, if I can help you, I'll help you, you know, and just, and just let me know that what you might need my assistance on, but please, whatever y'all doing, if you respect me, all I ask you to do right now is, is keep supporting Miss Stevie and what she got going on. Let's, let's help her, let's help her get to the next level of it. Uh, she want to get to for her, uh, little town of, I forgot the name of it again, Bambi, Bambi, South Carolina. But definitely keep supporting Bamber. her. Bamber. We're back. Keep, keep, <laughs> keep, keep supporting her and make sure y'all, man, just share her, share this interview, share her other interviews, anything that we can do to get her on the platform she wants to get on. Let's help, man, each other to make our dreams come true. Thank you. Because you never so know. We might need we might need her. Because she might get on that Oprah level, then you be trying to beg for a dollar. So you better help her get to the dollar. So let's all do that. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Y'all, y'all's love, y'all support. Thank you. And I appreciate you such a great once again. I appreciate yeah. you once again. You're not going to make me cry and mess up my face, Terry. Don't mess up your face. <laughs> don't mess up your face. Nah, don't mess up your face. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... I love you guys. I will see y'all tomorrow. Summer Rona, y'all take care. And again, this interview will be uploaded to Style by Stevie Daytime on YouTube. So you guys can head on over and subscribe and check out some of the previous interviews and conversations there as well, too. And I will see you all tomorrow. And Terry, it was such a pleasure. Likewise, much respect to you. The queen. You king. <laughs> the king. Thank you. The king all of right. film. Thank you. <laughs> okay.